Hello, this is Maria Jones. I am the COO Forum Atlanta Chapter Director, and I'm super excited for you to join today's COO Forum Member Spotlight Series. Today, I am ecstatic to share with you uh, and introduce you to my good colleague, Arthur Mills IV, who is reigning COO at America's Promise Alliance. You'll get to learn more about the COO role and more about Arthur himself, who hosts a good dinner party. Okay, everybody, I am here with another great friend and colleague of the COO Forum Atlanta, my great friend and colleague, Arthur Mills IV. Thank you so much for joining today. Maria, I'm so glad to be here. It's yes. a pleasure. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So we're going to just have a good chat about Arthur, learn a little bit more about him, also learn a little bit more about the role of the Chief Operating Officer today. So thank you for joining us. So Arthur, you know, one thing that's very consistent with everybody in COO Forum, they're going to tell me... <laughs> nobody's job in the COO form membership is the same. Right? Yep. So how would you define the role of COO or chief operating officer? Every day is different. I think that's the first thing to say is um, you have a plan for what you're thinking you're going to do and accomplish in a day or a week uh, and things happen. And so you've got to be uh, adaptive enough to jump into, okay, that's, that's changed, that's shifted. Mm -hmm. Um, what are we going to do about it? Mm -hmm. And everything comes across our desks. You know, as COOs, like everything to keep things moving, keep things working, happens. Anything mm -hmm. from, oh, the water is too cold or too hot, all the way to massive, really important um, production challenges or other scenarios. So mm -hmm. it runs the whole gamut. And that's what makes it so much fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So would you say no two days, no two days are alike? I don't want to say no two hours are alike. <laughs> But certainly, uh, no two days are alike, okay. and okay. and and again, that's what keep it keeps it interesting. And you have to have that right mindset to where it 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 could frustrate other folks or people that don't have a mindset that's like, okay, this is how this is. Mm -hmm. But and it frustrates me too from time to time. I'll be honest, but um, it's still just an incredible opportunity. Like every day, it's like, what what do we need to fix? What do we need to solve? Uh, what new idea do we need to hatch and then have it come to fruition? That's fun stuff. Yes, yeah, the fun stuff. You got it. So, um, Arthur, tell us about your history as being in the COO role. Um, how long have you been a COO? Mm -hmm. How did you come to be a COO? Okay. Um, well, I'm now in my second COO role. I'm now the uh, Chief Operating Officer for America's Promise Alliance. Uh, which is a national not-for-profit that was founded by uh, five former presidents and Ooh. General Colin Powell. Uh, the idea of around the organization really centers on fulfilling America's promise to its youth. Uh, so we focus on all things important and critical to youth development across the country, but we do that in a, in a collective impact approach where we work with national and local-based nonprofits that also focus on young people. So what does that mean for me? Um, in day in two day twelve of my new job, I should say, is, is um, now I'm in the listening phase of getting in and learning uh, what's going on, what's working, what's not working so well, what can we fix, which will then lead to the prioritization. Um, you know, learning more and getting more deeply engaged with our strategy to then say what do, what systems and structures do we need to have in place to execute on the strategy. Mm -hmm. Um, and then obviously a people com component is a huge piece mm -hmm. um, as we're growing rapidly that uh, we want to make sure we build the culture on the front end mm -hmm. so that as we scale that it'll be much easier to bring people into something that we have been very intentional around bringing. So okay. this is my second job. I've been a COO now for five years and, okay. and both of them have been in national not-for-profit. So okay. we had to manage you know, the pandemic, which was literally my first six to seven months on my on the oh. job uh, and having to think through all of the things to just protect our people mm -hmm. make sure that we could keep operating and all of those things and then also just managing strategy so yeah. it's 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 important work yeah. i have a lot of fun doing it oh, got it i just love when coos love the coo and operations part of their <laughs> job it's amazing mm -hmm. okay so tell us a good secret so what is your professional superpower mm. That's a good question. Um, I might actually say it's listening and connecting mm -hmm. with people. Uh, and why I think that's important, especially in the COO role, mm -hmm. is um, you've got to be able to create those trusting opportunities and environments for people to really tell you what's going on. Because um, I can't fix what I don't know. Mm -hmm. 
And there's nothing worse than folks off in the in the weeds having conversations, and then it just continues to flu mm -hmm. to fluster and grow up. Mm -hmm. And um, when I really want to have the opportunity to get me and our team to come together and kind of figure it out, and then do that collectively. Mm -hmm. um, I've learned that as much as I can probably sit over in the corner, back over here somewhere, and come up with an answer, and then just kind of roll it out. That's the easiest way, for sure. Easy, it's no. just a one-on-one, -on -one, <laughs> but it's not the best yeah. because you need that. You also need that 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 ability for folks to say, "Hey, I'm buying into this." Mm -hmm. And hey, uh, I think that's right. And hey, I've had a chance to contribute to the, to the answer. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna help you help this work. Yes. Uh, it's so much easier when you've got people rowing the boat with you mm -hmm. versus against you. Mm -hmm. um, and because everything comes, like we said before, everything comes through operations. Yeah. And so it's either thumbs up or thumbs down on almost every given day, every given moment. Yeah. So it's much better to have people be with you than against mm -hmm. you. So I, I think that might be my superpower. Wow, that is awesome. That was like, connecting with people, I think, is one of the most neglected things about the role sometimes. It I is. Think people remove um, the humanity from mm -hmm. the processes. So I, I'm so impressed that you really keep the people <laughs> first because yeah. people will make or break your process. I think you could probably yeah. spend days talking about oh, that. Oh, yeah, we don't, we don't have enough time for that. We don't have enough time for that, but um, yeah. but you're absolutely right. There There is a technical aspect to the work, and I, so I don't want to get away from that, too, that there's processes absolutely. and project management and all of the things that you know that are mm -hmm. disciplines mm -hmm. that COOs also bring, but when that's what you bring, and you that's your fastball, mm -hmm. and you don't have your curveball or your slider sorry for the baseball analogy if you have no way people didn't get that um, that if you don't have those other factors to really round it out then you know you won't be as successful as you could be absolutely absolutely now did you always know you wanted to be COO mm, I guess in a way yes without the title without the name because uh, I've always been a builder mm -hmm. I've always been a problem solver I've always been uh, someone that loves to just get in a room with a whiteboard and scribble stuff out and say, hey, let's figure it out. Mm -hmm. um, I came to find out as my career was progressing that that turns out to be a COO type role. You know, I, my background is truly in finance and strategy. Mm -hmm. So the operations piece just kind of came with a couple of stops I had in my career mm -hmm. to where, again, you get that technical piece yeah. of like how to make the trains run on time, mm -hmm. which is an important factor, but that's not the only factor, mm -hmm. like we said. So. I think in the end of being being able to sit down again and listen with people and be kind of an internal consultant, mm -hmm. which I've had that space in my career too, mm -hmm. that it really played into me uh, jumping into the role and being able to think about um, how to find out what's happening, how to figure out what to solve, how to prioritize what's important. So that's been cool. That's good. That's good. So for those people who are watching that, hey, I never even thought about the role. <laughs> what is that? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm learning about it. Hmm, could that mm -hmm. be interesting? Would mm -hmm. you tell me what type of student you were way back when, early in your career and prior? Uh, student like in college? Mm -hmm. and oh, previous. and yeah. previous? Mm -hmm. Well, honestly, school came easy for me on the front end, but then I got smacked in the face when I got to college because uh -huh. I hadn't really needed to study. Uh -huh. um, and school came really easy and I made great grades. Mm -hmm. So it helped me get into some, a really good program. Mm -hmm. And um, I, had to, I had to raise my game. I mean, that's the, really what it was. And so it was that humbling experience helped me really think about, okay, how do I need to dig in and really do this? Yeah. And, uh, and I'm not gonna quit right. at the same time. Mm -hmm. So that turned into, uh, helped me become a better student, helped me become more disciplined. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and helped me end up, end up with three degrees, mm -hmm. which was like, oh, you know, it's, it is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it, is it is what it is, but uh, again, I think it's, it's that curiosity that I also think is another really important uh, attribute for folks that manage run operations or run the operations of an organization at the mm -hmm. COO level is there's gotta be that level of intellectual curiosity yeah. that um, helps you really sit down and think about now, okay, I see how that's working, but um, what if we did this? What if we tweak that? Mm -hmm. um, and you know, when you can do that, then it's like, oh, well, no one's ever really thought about that. And so how do you facilitate those conversations? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Love that, love that. So most importantly, mm -hmm. when you have a quiet moment, <laughs> when you have a day to yourself with your COO, it doesn't always come natural. Yeah, what then is that? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> doesn't always come natural, that's right. How do you like to spend your time? Well, first of all, I have a beautiful wife who is my life partner, and that gives us a chance to uh, decompress both of us. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, 
Uh, so that's one space where I love to spend time. But um, a really exa real perfect example is um, generally every day I do most of our cooking at home. Oh. And so one of the things that gives me that disconnect is there's nothing like like doing a nice fine dice of onions mm -hmm. and, and celery and um, tomatoes. Mm. Um, so you know, I took, of course I took a class to get my knife skills up really good and I can make really fine cubes of tomatoes and onions. Um, but chopping vegetables after, between work and dinner uh, is a great way for me to kind of decompress and do that. I love to cook in general. Uh -huh. um, and then I read a ton. I've got so many books I haven't even cracked yet, but I, I'll see it. It's like, that's a cool book. I need yeah, to get that. Yeah. And I don't know when I'm going to have time to to catch up on all of them, but at least I have them. I've, yes. I've got an impressive library sitting yes, on my, I was say, on my wall. It, it, look, it looks good. Yes, it's, it yes. looks good. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, note for everybody, go to authors for dinner. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> we do love to host. That's one thing. We do love to host and, and serve. So think about it. <laughs> <laughs> sounds good. Sounds good. Well, thank you so much, author. It's been a pleasure chatting with you today. Always an honor to have conversation with you. If you all would like to meet or talk to author, please check out his LinkedIn or connect with him in the COOE forum. Additionally, if you are not a member of the forum and you're an up-and-coming operations professional or have an interest <laughs> and you'd like to get some mentorship, please check us out. You'll get more information from author and many great minds from the COO Forum on Mentorship Monday. Please reach out if you're interested at the COO Forum Atlanta. Thank you.